Hey guys, Mario here with uh, TCG Portal. Uh, we've got our locals uh, tournament uh, that just finished, and it's uh, Alice Cluster. We're moving to just strictly Alice Cluster here for now, and we've got our first place winner here, Dale Chapman, and he's going to give us uh, a rundown of his deck. All right, so tonight I played uh, another. I played uh, Necrolance. Uh, it was a pretty simple deck. Uh, so I'll just get into it. It was, of course, uh, the ruler is, of course, uh, Reflect. Yep. Um, the most important part of Reflect in this case is the plus two, plus two. Uh, that will usually let us pump our uh, Lancelots uh, to a thousand attack with only one Necromancy of the Undead Lord on them. And it just really pushes the deck and makes it actually work. Uh, we're playing a bunch of Regalia because... Uh, we are a Rulers Memoria deck because we want to play all the colors for splashes. So, the Galia are as follows. We're playing four uh, God's Bows because the bow is absolutely insane in aggro decks. It lets us push through uh, a bunch of blockers. Two, two bows alone is enough to push through almost anything you need. And... Uh, it can also just act as a really nice uh, defense uh, barrier in case you're playing like super aggressive. Uh, we are again Reflect, so we're using 4 Change the World because it's absolutely busted and I think right now if you're playing Reflect and you're playing Ruler's Memoria, you should have 4 of these. No questions asked. Uh, we have two Apollos. We have a lot of cards that benefit from being able to uh, bounce them and recast them. We play Hera's, we play Earthers. Even uh, bouncing and recasting a Prissia or a Lancelot is super powerful when you factor in the fact that every single time we're able to move the uh, Necromancies back onto the creatures. I almost considered playing three of these in the uh, main board, but I didn't want to uh, saturate my deck with too many Regalia, so I only wound up playing two. And then two Leviton. <coughs> There's again another card that is just an absolute house, and I would have played three. Being able to activate Reflex abilities on your turn is absolutely just the best feeling and lets you pull off so many more aggressive plays, like bouncing their blockers after blocks have been declared, and it just pushes through a bunch of damage, as well as uh, there were instances today where I've been able to discard Laveton to produce the red mana and use it to just be absolutely, like, just go super aggressive, like turn two Lancelot, or turn one Lancelot plays. Um, and the one drops that we're playing, pretty standard for most red decks. We have four Rook Egg because blockers that tutor when they die are busted. Uh, playing four Guinevere. Um, I really love Guinevere. I wish that I could have played with her a lot more back in um, back when we played New Frontiers. She does so much and provides a, so much utility uh, for any red deck that it just pushes it way over the edge. Uh, the ability to draw and discard, and especially when we're playing stuff like Necromancies in our deck, um, we are able to gain so much card advantage that we run over decks like uh, Xion and all the other control decks, uh, Xion, Kavia, just by pure numbers. Um, and then we're playing for Necromancy, the namesake card of the deck, well, one of the two namesake cards. Um, it just gets, it just makes your uh, Lancelot's bigger for free, and it's an absolutely busted card because it never is a two for one, or it's never card disadvantage at any point, no matter how you're using it, especially when you're like pitching it to a Guinevere. Like, I would even play this card if I wasn't playing easy ways to discard it. 
uh, like Guinevere. I'd still play it, hard cast it onto Lancelot and stuff like that. Um, it's almost like the whole uh, Ame and Lancelot trick back in New Frontiers, but nowhere near as busted. And the final two dro one drops that we're playing are two barriers because everybody's playing Ruler's Memoria because it's the only form of dual color stones outside of like a Kaguya or a Blazer kind of um, stone base. Um, so everybody's playing Ruler's Memoria and because they're all playing Ruler's Memoria they have to play Regalia so why not just punish them by playing two of these main board. Um, we only play one two drop because there's nothing else that we want to be doing on turn two other than dropping Lancelots. Lancelot is busted. He's totally ban worthy if this game ever decides to start doing bans. He's just way too efficient for a red card. Uh, moving on to the three drops, we play four Prissia. Um, again, super aggressive card. Uh, the fact that it uh, bolts your, thunders your opponent when it dies is absolutely insane because it, you can get to situations where when they're at like 500 or less life, if you just tutor up a Prissia with your uh, Reflect, you're able to get in and basically no matter what they're going to die because if they block it, it dies, if they block it and it dies then uh, they die to the trigger or if they don't block it they just take the seven and die. She's absolutely insane. Uh, we also play three coppers of Keeper of the Past, Earther. Uh, I have loved Earther since the moment it came out. It has been such a powerful card in the red decks. Uh, the body is super, like it's perfect on curve body, 8 8 for uh, three is what I want to be play, uh, paying for in this game. And the fact that it comes in and removes something uh, is pretty powerful. But it, what really makes it go all the way is when you combo it with Flame King Shout. Obviously, when you cast a Flame King Shout and you have an Earther that you're cheating in, uh, you're able to exile the Flame King Shout. So not only have you done uh, 400 from the Flame King Shout, you're able to shoot uh, another thing for 600. Uh, Earther is also really just great for dealing with um, J Rulers. It's actually this deck's only uh, way to handle a J Ruler uh, centric strategy. And it doesn't stop at just the 600 plus the four. No, because you can get more you even. Get another card, right? But like, that's a thousand damage yeah. as is. Alone. Something I cannot think of anything that is relevant that can survive a thousand damage other than like J Rulers. Uh, moving on to the stones, pretty simple. Four Rulers Memoria, six Fire Stones. Pretty simple. If we could be playing better stones, we would, but this is the best that we got. And uh, I have absolutely ugly stones, I hate it. Uh, sideboard, quickly running two Demon Flame. Because we have the four bows, we want the Demon Flames in order to get the little combo of dealing damage with the bow, then just harder moving it uh, to push through damage. So we're playing two of these against decks that have good blockers. Um, two Rapid Growths against decks that we need to get really aggressive. Uh, we can shoot it onto a Lancelot and make it a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, we're playing to Athena as more ways to close out the game if we find our games going too long. She's a really nice threat, especially when you can tutor it off of a Rook Egg. Uh, we're playing two Angel of Wisdom Cheritim. Uh, black and red are two of the best colors in the game right now. Uh, obviously red has all these amazing cards and black has Lucifer and Lucifer. So Cheritim is really relevant against those kind of decks. And so when we want to bring it in in order to pay for the Awakening, since we don't have any uh, moon sources in our deck, in our uh, stone base, we're bringing in a third copy of Apollo just to be able to produce the uh, moon that we need for the Awakening cost. Two Death Sites against decks that try to go really fast with us. But they're J Rulers. Um, just a really powerful card. And if your games go super, super, super long, these two work really well because you're removing cards to get your Death Scythe back. 
and you're removing cards through this, so eventually you actually might be able to turn on its uh, second clause, whatever. Uh, three Hera, just to deal with uh, Regalia strategies and just gain card advantage and punish decks that don't play enough Regalia to support their Rulers Memorias. And one Horn, just because it's great against control decks that want to go long and are running us out of resources. Awesome. Well, there you have it, folks. That's our first place winner tonight, Dale that Chapman. That's how you win. And I myself, folks, came second today, uh, but they're closing shop here, so I'm going to have to record uh, that video at home to let you know what I was playing. And uh, It's so pretty spicy. Then, we'll see you uh, next time. This is Mario with TCG Portal. Take it easy. Hey guys, be sure to check out GrinningRemnant.com, where you can find my videos and many other cool articles on everything Force of Will. And I'd like to thank Black Knight Games for holding these Force of Will tournaments. They are located in Hamilton, Ontario. Great place for all your card game, board game, and miniature needs. Great staff and lots of room. If you're ever in the area, be sure to check them out for things like FNMs and pre-releases, or just stop on by to take a look around. Links are in the description below. This is Mario with TCG Portal, and I'll see you guys in the next video.